Once again, we want to thank Alan for playing for us today and recording that for us so that we might have that as a part of our preparation for this Advent season. It is hard to believe that we are now officially halfway done with our season of preparation. You may be frantically trying to mail all your boxes out and trying to get them before Christmas. I've got some great news for you. Christmas only begins on December 25th. It is a 12-day celebration. So if it gets there the 27th or 28th or the 30th, it is okay. Because Christmas is a blessed season, not just a one-day event. <clears throat> and so with that in mind, we continue our preparation for that season. A couple of things that I would remind you of. We need some help. We've got Christmas coming. We've got families who are going to need to be fed. We need several items for our food shelf. Number one of which, soups and stews. If you can get cans of soups and stews, that would be fantastic. Second, individual meals for single, particular single men. We get a lot of single men who come and need something to throw into the microwave. That would be fantastic. We also need canned meats, whether it's tuna or chicken. Chicken is a fantastic thing that goes a long way for some of our families. We would be very grateful for that. We could also use ground beef. If you can buy some ground beef, we can cut that into portions and, and put that into bags that we can give, freeze and then give to families as they need. We will also need some tiny, small hams, maybe three or four pound hams, nothing huge, maybe five at the most, just smaller hams that we can give to some of these smaller families that are going to be in need this year. We have plenty of turkeys. Please don't bring turkeys. I think we're fine also with uh, uh, a lot of the pastas and so forth, but what we do need, it would be, we'd be very grateful if you could also bring um, some spaghetti sauce. We're kind of running low on that. So those are some of the items that we need. Uh, just call me if you want to drop it off or bring it with you to worship, or just let us know. We'd appreciate it. We'll meet you at a time at the church. You could drop those things off for us. And that would be your way of helping us prepare for a celebration for some of these families. They need some food and help. And they'd be grateful for it. Okay, so if you're here this day to worship God, let us prepare our hearts uh, for this worship by lighting our Advent candle. Let's just take a moment of contemplation, shall we? We have been through the season contemplating God's presence, giving thanks for his, the joy that we have in Jesus Christ. So during the season of Advent, we prepare. We light candles as a sign of hope and peace. Today we light our third candle on the Advent wreath, the candle of joy. Rejoice, for our Lord is coming into the darkness of oppression's exile to lead us home, as we hear from the book of Isaiah, the 35th chapter. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and blossom like a crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands. Make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are faint of heart, be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, the ears of the deaf unstopped. The lame also shall leap like a deer. 
The tongue of the speechless will sing for joy, and water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand will become a pool. The thirsty ground will spring forth of water, the haunt of jackals shall become like a swamp, and the hot grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway will be there. It shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it. It shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast come upon it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion, and singing everlasting joy shall be upon their hearts, and they shall obtain a joy and gladness. Sorrow and sighing will flee away. Let us pray. O Lord, our Redeemer, you lead us from languishing and sorrow's shadows into laughter and joy over all of your abundant restoration. We give you thanks that you are coming to us to lead us home along your holy way, the way of Jesus Christ our Lord, in whose name we give thanks and pray. Amen. Let us sing together our opening hymn for the day. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also Amen. with you. Let us hear the word of God from the book of Isaiah. 
for this day for the book of Isaiah. I apologize, we start with the book of Philippians. St. Paul writes, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say to you, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. Everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God. The peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. Here in Celeste. Our psalm is from the book of Isaiah today. Normally we read from the book of Psalms, but today our psalm is actually found in Isaiah, the 12th chapter. Surely, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the, the Lord, Lord God, God is my strength and my, my might. He has become my salvation. salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wealth of salvation. You will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds amongst the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Here in Celestia. Our gospel lesson for today is found in the book of John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, therefore, to the multitude that came out to be baptized by him, pardon me, John did, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit that befit repentance. Do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children of Abraham. Even now the axe is laid at the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So the multitude asked him, What will we do then? He answered them, He who has two coats, let him share with him who has none. He who has food, let him do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized and said, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than is appointed to you. Soldiers asked him, What we, will we do? He said, Rob no one by violence or by false accusation. Be content with your wages. So people were in expectation and questioned in their hearts concerning John whether he might be the Messiah. John said to them, I baptize you with water, but the one mightier than I is coming, the fog of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather wheat into the granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And so with many other exhortations he preached good news to the people. The gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this word today and ask you to open up the good news to us, because our hearts are certainly weary. For he asks us all in Jesus' name. Amen. In our lesson for today, I don't know how much in the way of good news you heard in the preaching of John. Now, if you were with us for last week's lesson, you might already understand that John is a repetition and the final prophet of a very old, worn-out prophetic tradition. Repent, and maybe God will forgive you. Now, we don't have, it doesn't mean that we can ignore it, but Jesus Christ has now changed the narrative. God's love has come amongst us. Rejoice and be glad. You are not in the condition that you need to be to meet the Almighty God, but it's okay. He wants to come to be amongst us anyway. That's the type of love that God has for us. So Jesus kind of turns this whole thing on its head, this prophetic voice of John. 
And I find it interesting, at the end of our lesson for today, it talks about all of these things that John is preaching, the gospel, the good news. I didn't hear a whole lot of good news here in John's message today. Heard it a lot in the Old Testament. I heard it from Isaiah. I heard it from Philippians. Rejoice and, and be glad. Be always glad because Jesus Christ is with us. But not in John. This is a present we should anticipate opening. Because he's pointing to the present that we're about ready to open. Jesus Christ. That's the good news. The good news isn't you and me going out and getting our acts together. We will never get our acts together sufficiently for God. So he gives some, some, some sage advice for soldiers. He gives advice to the rabbis. He gives advice to the common people. Just try to do well. Be kind to people. All of these things are good things. But what motivates that kindness? Again, I want God to be pleased with me because I'm afraid I'll go to hell. That should not come out of the lips of a Christian. That's not good news. From the lips of the Christian come this. I have a relationship with God. I am so grateful. I rejoice. I want to be kind and generous because my God has been kind and generous to me and I want his love to be shared. Rejoice and be glad. See, because this is the good news for today. It isn't the message of John. It's the one to whom John was pointing. For it is him who can find our joy. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the one to whom John pointed. Well, he had no other prophetic message but that old worn-out refrain, repent. But Jesus comes and brings a new message. That message happens to be a gift and that gift we give thanks for, the gift of Jesus Christ. And so let us rejoice and be glad, for the time is now amongst us. Our Lord God is with us through Jesus our Lord. For this we give thanks in his name. Amen. together the faith that we share in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for this season, a season of hopefulness and joy. We see the beautiful lights that our neighbors have placed up in their homes. Lord, we're preparing ourselves the baking of the bread, the baking of the cookies, the uh, cooking of the making of the cookies. Just all of these things that we anticipate, wrapping of the presents and sending them to our friends and our family. And we are so excited, God, because Christmas Day, there's always still that magical time for the, us and for our families. We know that there are many families for whom this will be a challenging year. Perhaps they've lost loved ones. This will be their first Christmas without them. And Lord, we also aware even for those who miss their loved ones 10, 20, 30 years, there's still an emptiness, an empty stocking that cannot be filled, an empty place in a seat at the dinner table. So we pray, God, that you would be kind and merciful and even amidst their sorrows, remind them that their hope is in you and that their loved ones are in your care and there's no better place for them to be, although, God, we have yearn and certainly desire for them to be here with us. So I pray that you would give us some peace, some hope, some joy, even amidst the tears that we may cry. We also give thanks, God, that you continue to touch and heal many of those in our community those who've been ill. We pray for those who are shut in. We pray for our community partners at New Day and Manna from on High and St. John Orthodox, their ministries, that they would continue to be used by you to bless our community. We pray for our mayor. We ask that you continue to bless uh, our Mayor Adams and continue to guide and direct his path. And Lord, whatever else is on our hearts and minds, we just take a moment of silent prayer to lift all of these concerns to you. Because our hands are full. Our shoulders feel bent and broken. So we ask you to lift these burdens off of us. That we might be set free. Our hearts might be filled with joy. So I pray that your burden was released this day. Those who are praying with me. And we commend to God all of these things upon our hearts. We trust them to God because He cares and loves us. For it is His precious name that we pray. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us conclude our service today with the singing of our song of sending.
peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.